And we are back on the Zero Hour. Joining us now is Bob Fetrakis. Bob is a political science professor in the Social and Behavioral Sciences Department at Columbus State Community College. He, along with Harvey Wasserman, has co-authored four books on election protection or the lack thereof, and they recently wrote a piece published in Common Dreams and elsewhere, uh, arguing, I would say successfully, that Richard Nixon was a traitor. Bob, thanks so much for joining us. Oh, glad to be on the show. Well, listen, uh, we're delighted to have you. And, you know, we have what on this program we call wait what moments where it's like, wait, what? We just found out from George Will, no less, that Richard Nixon participated in treason and it's not getting headlines anywhere. But for let's back up a second. Um, if you could just fill us in very uh, briefly on uh, why we have evidence that Richard Nixon is a traitor. Well, we've, we've had evidence uh, for a while, but uh, the confession by a, you know, right-wing columnist uh, who, you know, works with the uh, Nixon records is the final cementing of the deal. Uh, the Price of Power, 1983, Seymour Hersh originally raised the this issue regarding Kissinger, who was supposed to be working for Johnson uh, as his advisor on Vietnam, really was secretly working with Nixon. And, uh, of course, Robert Perry uh, dug out the uh, tapes uh, a few years ago, uh, which uh, had uh, Johnson complaining to Senator uh, Everett uh, Dirksen that it was, in fact, treason. And uh, so these allegations have been around for, uh, for a while, but for Will and just to, to confirm it. Yeah, and, ju- and just to jump in there, just for uh, uh, listeners who might not have the background, the, the, the core allegation here is that while Johnson was attempting to negotiate a Vietnam peace agreement, Nixon was, a- as uh, the challenger to Hubert Humphrey, the Democrat, was using back-channel sources and Henry Kissinger, as I understand it, to tell the Vietnamese not to accept Johnson's peace offer because he would give them a better one. Is that correct? Correct. He told them, uh, according to Will, hold on, uh, we're going to win. Uh, and again, uh, telling him to hold on, not not to get to Paris, not to negotiate uh, the settlement. Uh, the Nixon forces saw this as, you know, the equivalent of an October surprise. And the great irony is they pretty much settled to the same peace offer uh, in 73 after Nixon's reelection. Now, now you mentioned that there is something called the the Logan Act, which was enacted in 1797, which bans private citizens, which is what Nixon was at the time, from intruding into official government negotiations with a foreign nation. That is inarguably, according to George Will, among others, what Richard Nixon did. And um, is uh, does that meet the legal? It's certainly a violation of the law. Does it meet the definition of treason? Well, the, you know, the, the question of treason is giving, uh, you know, sort of the aid and comfort uh, to the enemy. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, you know, arguably the South Vietnamese government uh, was the enemy. Uh, I'd be willing to make that case uh, uh, any day. They're prolonging the, uh, the war that's going to lead to the death of 200,000 more American troops, uh, you know, to the death of a million or so civilians, uh, and uh, President too well established uh, uh, PBS and Frontline and other sources, uh, well known to have been a uh, drug runner, uh, financing a lot of that campaign out of the Air America traffic from Laos. So uh, I would argue uh, we ought to regard the South Vietnamese uh, as traitors. Uh, I mean, they, they were supposed to be our puppets, but they were acting independently, and it led to the death uh, of American soldiers. So I see that as treason. Well, and I think you could argue, you know, legal definitions aside, that in most people's minds, any illegal covert act, which leads to the deaths of 200,000 members of the American military, meets most people's definitions of treason. Yeah, surely we we can argue that. I mean, he betrayed uh, the soldiers. uh, You had more... Between 68 and 72, you had more than 100,000 wounded, 
20,000 dead, and the, really the civilians of Vietnam, many of them are supposed allies in South Vietnam, over a million of them died. But the ramifications on the United States itself, I mean, uh, Cambodia, uh, the illegal actions in Cambodia probably wouldn't have happened, uh, nor would have Kent State had there been peace in 68. The drug pipeline out of uh, Long Chen in Laos uh, wouldn't have flooded uh, places like New York and L.A. with uh, heroin. So there's a variety, uh, nor probably would we have swung so far to the right with Reagan and Bush later on. So there's drastic implications of what right, happened and, here. Absolutely. And, and I do want to get to Reagan at some point because there's an interesting parallel I think I wanted to ask you about. Mm -hmm. but, but before we even go there, the, here's something that's been on my mind a lot. Uh, now, R Richard Nixon is beyond the reach of law at this point, uh, human law anyway, because he has left this world. But um, Henry Kissinger is alive. And uh, if Richard Nixon broke the law, didn't Henry Kissinger also break the law? Yeah, and absolutely. And uh, Kissinger should, in fact, be uh, tried under the uh, Logan Act. I mean, you could argue that, uh, you know, Chenal, uh the, you know, Anna Chenoff, who is working for Nixon as a go-between directly, uh, uh, would have broken the law as well. But Kissinger is alive, and as you well know, some countries regard him as a, uh, a war criminal. And, uh, you know, I mean, they ought to bring all the charges, including, uh, you know, the uh, charges for uh, illegally intervening in Chile as well in, uh, in installing Pinochet. So... Uh, Clearly, Kissinger should be brought to justice for his actions in this. Well, I, I, I would be uh, more than happy to see that take place. Uh, I, I wouldn't take bets on it, but uh, be, with the uh, foreign policy establishment being what it is, but I would certainly uh, enthusiastically support an investigation of that kind. Now, just fast forwarding a little bit to uh, the Ronald Reagan presidency, there was some talk that uh, Reagan may have employed a similar strategy uh, against Jimmy Carter by making overtures to the Iranians while he was a private citizen running for president. Do you know anything about that? Uh, sure. Harvey and I actually wrote an extended piece on, uh, on that as well. Uh, uh, for the free press, but uh, unfortunately, the only people that would publish it, uh, well, I don't want to say unfortunately since they paid us for it, uh, was Hustler <laughs> magazine, but the October mm -hmm. surprise. Uh, from the fall of the Soviet Union, the Soviet archives, and uh, again, uh, you know, uh, Gary Sick and uh, Barbara Honiger, and of course, Bonnie Sauter, uh, the man who we put in as the, you know, uh, liberal alternative. Uh, all have provided uh, detailed accounts of the October surprise, the illegal negotiations, which seemed to go directly to the former CIA director, George Herbert Walker Bush. So, in fact, uh, you know, they're guilty uh, of the same thing. Uh, all of them that are alive, including the former president and CIA director, uh, should be tried under the Logan Act. Well, I have to tell you that there's so much to this subject. I wish we could uh, delve into it in even more depth, but um, I think it's very interesting to, I guess we'll close with this. I will ask you, um, is lawlessness and treason becoming something of a pattern in our politics now, particularly since we're, I use the word treason in foreign affairs and military affairs? Should we be expecting more of this in the future? Well, I, I think what you've seen is the covert actions of, of the Cold War, the 5,000 benign operations that were admitted to in the 70s with the uh, Church Committee in the Senate. All that type of game playing in foreign nations has come home. That which used to be covert in those countries is now overt in the United States, including, you know, election rigging here. Uh, at home. So I think lawlessness prevails, the lies prevail, uh, you know, the gamings of the system prevails, and uh, it allows us to be ruled by what can only be called a kleptocracy. 
uh, with the open looting of the country that come along with these gains. Well, I just have one last question for you, Bob. Do you have tenure? <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> you know, the uh, only reason I, just... I can say that my, my most extensive interview on the 04 election uh, was in the, uh, the Farsi News from Iran uh, right, and uh, right. a few other countries. I mean, uh, there doesn't seem to be much interest outside of stations like yourself here in the United States, but the rest of the world is listening, and thank God I have tenure. And we're going to stay on it, and I'm glad you have tenure, too. Uh, thanks so much for joining us, Bob Petrakis, political science professor, author, talking about law- treason and lawlessness in American foreign policy. Thanks for joining us, Bob. All right. My pleasure. I'm Richard R.J. Escow, and we will be right back after this. This is The Zero Hour.